Ben Hogan's pilgrimage to Scotland ended victoriously in 1953 on the 18th green at Carnoustie. The iconic Open Championship venue that is often referred to as golf's greatest test. However, this incredible story began two miles further west. That journey had began two weeks previous and when Ben Hogan first set his feet on Scottish soil it was here at Panmure Golf Club and he had one clear plan and that was to learn how to play Lynx golf having never done so before. He went on to qualify at the Burnside and later on to victory in that Open Championship at Carnoustie and as golfers we've now been provided with the opportunity to follow in those footsteps. The monumental achievements of Ben Hogan cannot be fully appreciated without understanding that four years previous to these events, he had suffered a career-threatening car crash. So this is one of the courses in terms of Ben Hogan's journey, and this was the practice ground, and this is where, like I said, he learned that trade and for me Pam Yor is a special golf course. I've played here once before and uh, immediately as I arrived in the clubhouse it's, uh, it's certainly got a sense of history from the minute you arrive and it's a special place, an extremely good golf course and a test of your golf skills as well. I just love it here. Now Pamuel Golf Club clearly left its mark on Ben Hogan and uh, as it stands now Ben Hogan left his mark on Pamuel because the sixth hole was a favourite of his but he made one recommendation and that was to introduce a uh, pot bunker to the front right of the green. It's now known as Hogan's Hole and uh, I've got to tell you it is a fantastic golf hole albeit extremely tough. I took on the challenge back in July into what was a sort of two a club three headwind um, I managed to get a birdie put walked off with a par and uh, I think it's about time we took on that challenge again. It's stroke index one and it is very much Pamuel's signature hole now. It's um, it, weaving your way through from tee to green is, uh, is quite difficult and like I said finding some short stuff for your second shot is no mean feat. We're going to go with driver, we're a bit downwind, I think last time I played it I had something like a three iron into the wind and I'm hoping I've got a shorter club in hand this time round. Uh, I'll explain as we go, you'll see a big antenna on the left hand side and the flag and green is sort of uh, 30 yards to the right of that. Um, but yeah, we need to find some short stuff. So I'm going to be aiming, you've got three trees in front of you, I'm going to be aiming at the one on the left hand side of the three and see if we can leave something in and around there and like I said with a bit of a shorter ironing than I had last time. I've nailed it on that tree and it has not moved. So I'm hoping that that's a decent tee shot. We shall find out. Do you know what the driver it was so solid and uh, the one thing you'll notice from the aerial footage is the fairway is, uh, is tight to say the least. And I've just kind of bounded over and run off but uh, we've got kind of 110 in which is far different. I played three iron last time I played it. I've got wedge in hand today and uh, we certainly are playing downwind. The flag is directly over Hogan's bunker so it's it's not a bad light but it has got to land uh, we've got to carry the bunker and land it fairly soft. Big ask. Oh jeez and be right be right, sit, sit. I think it's held on the back end. I don't know what it is about this hole, but that is a really good shot. I'm so pleased with the contact I got. 
And like I said, it's uh, it's chased on a bit coming out of the rough, but I've got a birdie put and that's all that matters. Right, so we've got to the green and, uh, well, I'm pleased with that, but, uh, and I think we've pitched in here. I can't even see a pitch mark. The greens are firm and clearly coming out of that rough, no control whatsoever. Um, but looking at the putt, it's a good two putt, never mind. Uh, it's certainly not birdie two from here. You would certainly be happy with. There's a slope just before the hole that's going to see it run away. So if we can get two down from here, I'd take it. Go, go. Bit disappointing, I thought that would run down the slope. I thought we had a bit of a chance. Well, it's a four and I take the four. It's very much uh, different than what I got it first time round. Uh, but what that means is that uh, I'm going to have to come back to Pam Yor again and that elusive birdie still awaits. Great golf hole though. Understanding the nuances of Lynx golf, the uneven lies, the rolling fairways and firm and fast greens, all to be played with a smaller ball than he'd ever previously used, would all be achieved here at Pam Yor. So with just two weeks of practice on Lynx turf at Pam Muir under his belt, it was just a small matter of qualification and it was over to Carnoustie and the Burnside course. So this was the third leg of a potential triple crown. He'd already won the US Open, he'd won the Masters. But despite all of that, in those days, you still had to qualify before he even made his way to that Open Championship. The Burnside is a par 68 and already sort of eight holes in, I can already see it's sort of, it's very tight, uh, not, not necessarily long. Uh, the weather again will play its part. We've got it really easy this morning with no breeze whatsoever. But the thing that strikes me about Hogan was kind of his meticulous planning and how he plotted his way around courses and his ability to shoot a score that he required. Um, he did that here and then as we know he went on to do that in uh, every single round of the four rounds of the open as well in the pot bunker middle of the fairway pot bunker I don't know whether I agree with that sneaky bunker in the middle of the fairway but the irony is if I needed to hit the middle of the fairway I wouldn't have and the one time I do you put a bunker in the middle of it
So this is day two of what would be a, a three-day trip. I think what uh, Pamir and Carnoustie have done here, they've put a package together, which, like I've said, allows you to follow in the footsteps of Ben Hogan. You get to uh, dine in the clubhouse at Pamir and at the Rookery, and they're sort of uh, very opposite. You've got very much the traditions of Pamir and the new modern uh, setup at the Rookery. So it's uh, it's a great, great experience. I've got to say. Only day two and I'm only halfway around in terms of the Burnside, but uh, Pam Yor, as I said, fantastic. And I love the Burnside. It's a tight little fiddly one. And uh, like I said, you've got to plot your way around. It's, uh, I've not used driver a great deal at this stage. I'm, uh, I'm channeling my inner Hogan and uh, planning my way around this place. Not quite the same results, I doubt. What I find is these sort of sister courses, if you like, to the what is the Open Championship venue at Carnoustie, they sometimes fall uh, in the shadow of those courses and uh, they're not so much overlooked, but I can assure you this Burnside course, you know, is top, top quality. Right, that's it. We've had our practice sessions at Pam Yor. We've now qualified at the Burnside. It's just a small matter of that Open Championship. It's right across that fence. I'm not sure how uh, Mr Hogan warmed up for his final 18 at Carnoustie, but for me, it is a bit of uh, bacon, haggis and fried egg at this new Rookery uh, restaurant. I'm overlooking the first seat and the 18th green and uh, in an hour or so, we'll be ready to go. So this amazing story continues and it's on to the Open Championships at Carnoustie. Right, so as Hogan left his name on that uh, six hole at uh, Pam Yor, he's done the same uh, on the six at Carnoustie. Uh, I think this has only sort of uh, changed your name in the last sort of 20 years or so, and it's now known as Hogan's Alley, the six. And you can see from the drone footage quite why it's extremely tight down that left hand side between the three bunkers that you see. That first bunker on the right of screen uh, to the out of bounds on the left, I believe, is 23 paces. There is an option to bail out a little bit right and I think we're uh, a little bit lucky today in that we're slightly forward on the tee so I'm hoping we can certainly carry the first one but whether or not we'll uh, catch the second two and that's providing I don't manage to pull anything down the left but um, it's a thing like this where you're playing holes where you, you've seen them on the TV before uh, in Open Championships and you get the opportunity to come here and have a little go at it yourself. And I think that's something that you can't do in any other sport, and it's, in it's incredible. Let's see how I get on. It's certainly one you don't want to go left. We've had th three drives on the bounce, good. Let's see if we can add another. Well, it's a decent enough drive, but I've been too scared of the bunkers and that splashed into bunker three. And uh, that'll be an interesting one because it looks incredibly steep. They talk about clever course design and uh, as I said, left out of bounds and you're certainly fearful of that, so I didn't want to turn anything over. And to be honest, it's a really solid drive and there's quite a gap between each of the three bunkers, but I sort of went splash straight into this one. And I've got nothing, I've got a 58 wedge and I ain't going nowhere in terms of uh, distance yardage wise gains. I'll just be lucky to get it up and out, I think. Yeah, that's it, shot lost.
Do you know what, when I walk these fairways, the thing that I admire most about Hogan is, yes, he had those couple of weeks practice rounds at Pam Muir, but you compare that to what the pros say nowadays, where they want to play multiple open championship venues before they get accustomed to what is Lynx Golf. It's so, so different. Them elevations that I've just walked through then ask totally different questions of your game. And like I said, don't forget, he'd never experienced anything like this uh, prior to coming here just two weeks earlier. Yeah, Spectacles is, uh, again, infamous, as is pretty much all of Carnoustie. And uh, although in terms of the, uh, the game I'm playing today, I've had to sort of lay up to the right of here, I've dropped the ball in because uh, I've got a little goal. These are absolutely monstrous. And uh, you wouldn't want to find yourself in either of them. It's, uh, well, I don't know. I've put myself pretty much in and amongst the face of it. And that's probably a couple of feet taller than me at least. So uh, we'll give it a go. I have brought another ball in my pocket, by the way. Right, so I'm 58 wedge. It ain't going forward, it just needs to go out. <laughs> well, we got it out. That was about as much loft as I could get on it. And uh, I got out of spectacles and uh, I wouldn't want to be in it again. Not if it mattered anyway. Well, 15 is an absolute stunning golf hole. They say these final four are really tough. and. Uh, to put that into perspective, I've just hit driver and five were two of my Sunday best, I'll be honest with you. And, uh, well, we haven't got there. And uh, although I've avoided these two bunkers, I will have avoided all the bunkers, but I've got a horrendous chip left in. Uh, but such a great design and what a great start to this back four. Yeah, I'm afraid that's another bogey, but, uh, and I've struggled a bit with the putting, but what I will say is that uh, some of the breaks are very obvious and some are very slight. And coupled with that, with the, uh, with the pace of these things, then it's, uh, it's another challenge that is uh, championship golf, I'm afraid. I think Hogan's record was the most, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. He entered only 11 majors. Incredibly, he won nine of them. And in the year 1953, he entered six tournaments and he won five. Three of them were majors. A five wood into the Barry Burn meant it wasn't to be the euphoric end I had hoped for. to emulate van der Veld, I chose a more cautious route to finish with a double. But you know what, it didn't matter, because when I look back on the past three days, I just played the fairways and followed in the footsteps of arguably the greatest golfer of all time.